Welcome to Ignite Success. I'm your host, Snowden McFall, 25-year professional speaker, six-time author, and coach for women in confident public speaking and money business breakthroughs. And with me today is Elizabeth Gunn. Elizabeth is the Chief Nurse Executive at Baptist South Hospital. Welcome, Elizabeth. So glad to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here, Snowden. Thank so you so Elizabeth, much for having me. You are so welcome. So last week, Elizabeth, we had the honor, because I was chairing Women Connecting Women, so I can say we, had the honor of bestowing upon you Frontline Woman of the Year. Yes, that was quite an honor. Thank you for that. It was um, unexpected. I didn't realize that I'd actually won the award. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was a very joyous time. Well, and as you probably know, Women Connecting Women honors hidden gems, outstanding women who are doing so much in their community but often don't get recognition for it. And you were chosen, Elizabeth, because of the incredible work that you've done on the front line assisting during the COVID-19 crisis and throughout the pandemic. Can you tell us a little bit about your position and the number of people underneath you and how you have worked during COVID? Well, my position is, the title is um, Vice President for Patient Care Services. And I have approximately 800 people who through various leaders roll up under my responsibility. Most of those are nurses, nursing assistants, pharmacists, and others involved in direct patient care. Um, so what we do every day is plan for and make arrangements to care for all of the people from our community who present to Baptist South with a need for inpatient or emergency care or surgical services care. What we did particularly for um, COVID was to plan for a surge of patients, to plan to have a much larger number of people requiring care simultaneously. So tell us about, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, Caritas cart, is that right? The Caritas cart, yes, it's um, the word Caritas meaning to care for comes from our nursing um, theorist, Jean Watson. And it is how we it is how we build our theory of nursing practice here at Baptist South. So the Caritas cart is just a cart with um, mindfulness exercises and brief snacks, because sometimes a snack is what you need That's to right. uh, to do self-care. Right, absolutely. So important to take care of yourself. And I know that there was a massive initiative that you spearheaded along with your team for upskilling nurses during this time. That's correct. Um, because we were anticipating very large numbers of quite ill patients, we needed to have more critical care beds than we would normally use in our facility. So we had quite a concentrated educational effort and skills um, building course so that the nurses from our progressive care units could move into critical care and be of assistance there. And the nurses from our general medical units could go into our progressive units and be of assistance there. And by doing that, we were able to go from a usual number of 16 critical care beds to up to 60 critical care beds if they were needed. That's awesome. And I know you treated, you've treated over 2000 people for COVID, is that right? System wide, yes, ma'am. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. And what advice do you have for women who are considering getting into the nursing profession? Because I know there's a shortage, isn't there? Yes, ma'am. Um, my advice would be to carefully look and see what the many different options are. Um, if you've never had any background or educational background, there are courses of anywhere from two years to four years for to enter into nursing. There is financial assistance for those who may not be able to finance their education completely out of pocket. And for those who've already earned a degree in a different field, there may be available a fast track or a more concentrated coursework that would concentrate just on nursing courses and would give them maybe an 18 month entry time into nursing. So there's a lot of different things one can do in nursing, and it's very exciting and more and more opportunities every day. That is so exciting. That's awesome. And I, and I think that there are plenty of opportunities these days for, for both men and women to become nurses. And I know it's a, a critically needed 
field. So Elizabeth, you've been at this for a very long time. You've done amazing work. You've had incredible successes, and I'm sure there's been some ups and downs. What has been your best self-care strategy? You know, I just think um, knowing that the work that one does is important and giving it everything you have while you're there and then having whatever works for you. For me, uh, uh, we, we, are, we are spiritual people. Um, and for me, being able to know that I am not doing this alone or under my own power or strength or determination, and then being able to trust that, um, that God is giving me the strength to do it, but then also that the results are in his hands. And um, that, that makes it possible to keep going forward every day. That's right. That's right. And I know you also have an incredible husband because when I was citing statistics about women in the workplace and talking about how important they are last week at Women Connecting Women, he was cheering. So he's definitely <laughs> one of your biggest fans. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. He, he has always been. He has always been in my corner. That's so wonderful. Well, Elizabeth, we want to salute you and thank you and all of your employees and all the people on the front line who are doing so much to help us all get better and survive throughout COVID. And congratulations on being Frontline Woman of the Year. Thank you so much, Snowden. I appreciate it. Stay with us. We have interviews with more great women coming up soon.